but I didn't hear from you a lot during like the first and second quarter. What were the vibes like? I felt like you started ch like popping in the group chat a little bit more, at least once we got to like <laughs> 17, 17. And I then, sure. you know, like things started to pick up a little bit, obviously, after that. Um, so why sure do what they're going to do? Well, yeah, yeah. What, why do you think we found ourselves in that position there in the first half? Like, what was Clemson doing that was working? What was Florida State doing that was not working? I thought Clemson did a really good job of, of getting the ball to its tight ends and its backs. I think they did a I, honestly, I, I think they out schemed Florida State early on in the ballgame. I mean, they, they basically anticipated what the Knowles would try to do. And I mean, to be honest, that was kind of a pathetic effort by Florida State today. In, in, in many respects, if you think they're like a legitimate national title contender type team, which I don't, right? I, I think they're a, a team that will contend for the playoff. I don't think they're that like super team level. You know, I I was on 24-7 and Carl Reed told me he thought that the this was the best team in the country. And my eyes about fell out of my head. I was like, I, I don't see it along the lines of scrimmage. Clemson was more physical than in the day for the most part, right? They had multiple chances to put the game away. They harassed Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis didn't look like he wanted to run. He's just kind of throwing – like he's he's choosing the go ball route almost all the time, not really taking the profit underneath when Clemson would give it. I thought Clemson did a pretty nice job of giving different looks and gaming Florida State into running the football and then shutting that down. Like they were trying to dare FSU to run it with, you know, full light box or, or, or like, like a half light type, type look to where you had the numbers to run. And yet Florida State got pushed around up front by a Clemson defensive line that was not very good. But if you're an FSU fan, you're pretty happy about this because you haven't beat Clemson in seven years, you know, yeah. and you they just kind of keep swinging. I'm sure if you're Norvell, like they were down 10 plus to LSU too at one point, right? And it just never got bigger than 10. They just kept force feeding the ball to those, those receivers on the outside. Clemson, they found a way to get some pass protection breakdowns against Clemson, which was really big. I mean, and obviously, the obviously one, Kale, yeah, Kalen, uh, yeah. Deloach. Wait, yeah, Deloach, right? Yeah, and I was like, okay. But on the prior drive, Clemson, I think, scores on that prior drive. They hit like four extremely impressive plays in a row that were just just razor-thin margins. Like, wow, okay, Klubnik got, got whacked there and there and there, and he put the ball on the money, and it was just like a, a really nice catch, just kind of almost exactly where it had to be. And it's like, that. can they keep doing that? Can they keep doing it, or can Florida State keep getting free runners on the quarterback? And ultimately, they, they they found a way to kind of scheme up Clemson's pass protection scheme to get that hit and get the defensive score. It doesn't feel this way to me. You know they had more yards per play than Clemson? Yeah, I do. By, by point one. I, by point one. Yeah, but it doesn't feel that way at all, right? Like, it feels like Clemson controlled the football game. They just never could put them away. Well, yeah, that was like the whole – they never led over, or they never, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even lead. Like, Clemson led, or the game was tied until the game was almost over on the first possession of overtime. Um, yeah. You mentioned that you know they had more yards per yards per play by point one, but uh, Clemson had more total yards by more than hundred. They had more first downs. Uh, Cade Klubnik, outside of getting rocked and coughing the ball up, actually had a pretty good game. Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought he Tyler, well. Brown, you know, Tyler Brown got knocked out for a little bit, even came back and still came up with some big catches. You know, Will Shipley was able to get involved in the passing game, but there were just some devastating decisions that were made right at the end. And, and the thing that I came back to is that there were failures at the margins for the Clemson Tigers that you cannot have against a Florida State team that I do believe is still – like college football play. Like this is where, but it sounds like you and I are differing. Like you are holding a top three standard to the word of college football playoff. Cause only four teams can be in there. But I believe being a college football playoff contender on September 23rd is more like a top eight or nine proposition. Right. Sure. And so Florida state right now, as flawed as they might be and as flawed as they were in this performance, they are of that caliber. And that's where Clemson cannot make those kind of mistakes yeah. to just say, Oh, you know what we're going to do? We get the ball with 705 left. We're only playing for a 30 yard field goal. That's all we need to do. We're just going to get the guy who is in business school online in Charleston and just showed up on campus on Tuesday 
because he made a 30 yarder in the first quarter. Yeah. He's got the goods to be able to go out there and bang this home, not be a little bit more aggressive in trying to move that ball forward. I mean, I, I called my shot. I, I jumped in the, the workroom at seven minutes left. I said, Dabo's going to milk every second of this clock and he's going to put it on the unretired kicker to go out there and win it. Cause you're right. Like, there are a lot of statistics that say that Clemson should have won this game, and if they do better on that final possession, they win this game. Then you get to the second possession of overtime in the first overtime when it's third and one, and you call a run-pass option, and he, Cade Klubnick opts to pass the ball to the flat instead of trying to get the one yard. Dabo Sweeney caught on camera showing him the one yard you know, you've got the coaching decisions of Clemson defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin, who decides we're only going to rush three and drop eight against Jordan Travis for the final possession of the first half. Yeah. And guess what? Jordan Travis leads him down the field in a minute 50 to score. And they didn't get the full two for one with the touchdown on the first drive of the second half, but they got a field goal. Like Clemson has a game notes section about the middle eight, and you corked it at the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half. Like margins is what you've got when you're going up against a team that is more well-rounded than you. And Florida State is more well-rounded than Clemson. Clemson did everything it needed to do except for very, very small decisions. And that's why they lost that game in overtime. First of all, we learned today why when it comes to kickers, you want liberal arts majors. <laughs> Not business school. You don't want business school, STEM majors, anything that's kind of <laughs> logical or analytical. You just want free thinkers who can empty their mind, hurry, and just kind of like la la la, go out there and kick with no pressure on them. The guy who's you know studying, who knows numbers, thinks way too much. He was out there thinking about it too much. He knew he knew what the numbers were if he missed the kick. If he made it, it got in his head. He missed it. Second of all, Chip, you touched on it a little bit. This was one of those games. It's like we focus on the, you know, the decision to go for the field goal late. We focus on like, you know, the coaching staff and the being conservative. The moment that changed this game was one little thing that we don't really think about in the big picture. One missed block. Phil Maffa not picking up the blitzer, doing his job as a running back who's supposed to pick up a blitz, not recognizing it and going out to run a route before he knew that led to that fumble, that led to the scoop and score completely change this game if Mafa makes that block Clemson probably wins and that's how close this game was and that's what it comes down to sometimes so where does Clemson go oh and two for the first time since 2010 and for Clemson fans who listen to this program you will remember 2010 ended in a Meineke car care bowl loss to BJ Daniels and USF I'm just remembering some dudes over here and Dabo <laughs> was on the hot seat and he decided to fire his offensive coordinator, whose name was Billy Napier, remembering some dudes over here. He hired Chad Morris, won the ACC in 2011. The next year, first ACC crown for the Tigers in 20 years, kick-started the entire run. So we're at 2010 levels, which means down bad. As down bad as Clemson has been in a very, very long time. What does the rest of the season look like for the Clemson Tigers? Nine and three. Like you're in the bowl, in the cheese yeah. bowl, hoping to continue your 12 straight double digit wins like they were in 2020 when they had to beat Iowa State to get their 10th win to continue the double digit win streak. Yeah. I, I, I think you look at this Clemson team. I think today's game proved that even though they lost, like they're good. And the, the reaction to the Duke loss was way overblown by a lot of people who were just quickly like, oh, it's done. Clemson's done. They've lost twice. They sh they beat themselves the first game. They got beat today by another good team. They're still going to be a top 15 team this year. They're probably, in reality, a top 10 team, although I don't think they'll be finished in the top 10 with their record. So, yeah, they're fine. They're going to win just about every game from here on out. Yeah, I, I think they're certainly a top 15 quality team, like power rating-wise. I, I won't drop them that after today, right? Uh, but they won't be ranked, you know, for a while, so... <laughs> Yeah, I but, but I don't was ranked going into tonight's game. Oh, so <laughs> look, it if, if you want to get ranked, just play, play play a schedule of nobody's to start the year and, and, mm -hmm. and just beat them and have the zero in the loss column and you're good. I, I don't know that I see nine and three though. There's I tough mean, games. Yeah, like that. Mm. Look, Cuse at Cuse, you should beat. Correct. Like Cuse is not that great. 
Wake messed oh, around today. Georgia Tech. Dog. Four turnovers at home. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Wake's just not that good. It's bad. Yeah. I know. It I mean, breaks. they had four turnovers and a chance to win that game. I, I think that there is so little confidence in that offense right now. Like, statistically, you had four turnovers. You still had a chance to win. Come on, you were right there. But I will say that, like, watching that Wake team and watching that Wake offense, it's not clicking right now. It, it is fits and starts, as they say. And that's not what we are used to seeing over the last three quarterbacks, going all the way back to John Wolford yeah. with that Demon Deacons offense. That's fair. I think Clemson's Miami already played NC its two State. toughest ACC games. I mean, Miami no, I think got the Tar Heels coming to town. Tech. Let's no, go. I stand by what I said. They've played their two toughest ACC games, Duke and Florida State. It's all cake from here. No, nah, Duke, Duke's a top four ACC team. I'll take mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I agree. Duke took care of business today. Like, all right, so, no so, worse than five. Yeah, no yeah. worse than five. All right. Anything else on Florida State Clemson? I'm curious to see how, how much better this FSU team gets over the next month. You got bye week, Vatech, Wake, Q, Duke. You, you basically got a month to see if Travis can get the shoulder a little healthier, to work on some things in practice, to figure out, like, what do you want to be as a team? Because if this is their final form, like this isn't good enough to go in a playoff game. If they can actually unlock another level that we haven't seen yet, like we saw it for like maybe 10, 15 minutes against LSU. You know, if they can figure out what they do better in practice, um, maybe like this is a really important building month for them. Because if, if they play really poorly, like Duke could beat them. The other teams won't beat them. Is the Virginia Tech game at home? Yeah. I would rest, Travis. I would too. Is the defense as bad as it looked at times? So, like, they gave up a bunch of completions, and they played a boatload of, like, man and pretty aggressive quarter stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought the adjustments were pretty poor. Right. But they did not give up a bunch of explosives, and they did get, like, a lot of hits on the quarterback, a good number of tackles for loss. Over the final nine Clemson drives, only one was more than 45 yards. So, like, Clemson started like a house of fire. FSU changed up a little bit of what they were doing. And then, I mean, obviously Clemson still moved it, but they didn't sustain the drives, and they did not hit, the, like, the like the kill shot explosive down the stretch, which is kind of what they needed, which if they had used the transfer portal, maybe they, they don't run out these receivers. Right. I mean, like, That's what I would say was embarrassing. Like, but, Yeah, because you could also be hey, these guys. These guys I, are I'll scrubs. I'll tell you what. Our defense yeah. didn't give up any explosives to the offense that doesn't get explosive plays. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. Did you see the graphic that ABC had for this game about the transfer portal? Oh, with uh, the, the – Like Mike Norvell's at the velvet rope letting everybody in and Dabble's just standing there like this, not letting anybody in the club. <laughs> Which, and like speaking of explosives, one of the very few explosive plays was the 46 yard run by Phil Maffa, which was literally right before Deloach comes in off the edge and then lights up Cade Klupnik and changes this game. I mean, there were zero points in the fourth quarter. That was, that was at the very, very end of the, this game had zero, no, excuse me. It was like one score at the very, very end. I think it was like 150 left on the clock in the first quarter. By the way, I've got my writing assignment up. I'm not trying to like box score this thing. Um, one score right at the end of the first quarter, then second and third quarters, haymaker, 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 haymaker. I mean, I'm total ACC boy here, but I thought it was a really fun game. You know, it was a fun game. It was like yeah. a really good competitive game. Fourth quarter was just stop after stop after stop after stop. Clemson comes up with five stops in a row, forces four punts and a turnover on downs. Like there was the field goal at the beginning of the third quarter, and then it's just all the way through. I also got the live soundtrack of Danny watching it while we were in break on HQ and he was in studio and when Clemson missed the field goal. And I'm just going to say that what Danny said while we were off air after the missed field goal was very different from the tone he took on air when describing the play. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Maybe we do bring back Knowles to go just for <laughs> Danny Danny uh, hot mic for uh, during during Florida State games that are very very close. I'll work with our our people at CBS Sports HQ for that.